All right, welcome to Kerbal Space Program. We are going to look at a loading screen. Oh, here we go. This is what we're here to see. We're going to control a rocket from the runway all the way to the launch pad, if I can get to the actual launch pad. I had issues with testing that this has a lot of trouble trying to get over the ramps, ramp bits. So I think I solved the problem. I had wheels in the middle holding the middle part up. Turns out I didn't really need them. This thing doesn't seem to bow a whole lot. You can see it if I do fizz warp. Oh my god. <laughs> Not quite out of it, but uh, yeah. Revert. That's not the, the issue I was having earlier. It used to be when you did fizz warp, everything kind of sagged. I'm sure people know what I'm talking about. That's not what I had. So apparently I don't have issues with fizz warp. I have issues with the runway deciding to die. All right, let's go. This will take forever because it's really slow. Did I not turn those on? Okay. So apparently when you do this, it's going to only sit at... Okay, it's uh, not going to do a full charge. Oh, now we're moving. They never fix this bug. This is the bug where if you shimmy left and right with these uh, wheels, you'll get going really fast. Which cuts down on travel time significantly. But as we don't want to break our stuff all in half, we will get woed up here. The problem is you lose steering when you do that. So we gotta get slowed way down so we can negotiate these turns. Otherwise they just lock themselves out. They won't even do it. Man, that bug's been in there for years. Surprised they haven't fixed it yet. You can get these going really fast if you do that trick. You have to be pressing forward and then shimmy to side to side, and then the wheels just go into hyperdrive mode. It's really cool seeing something so big and ungainly going really fast until it breaks, which usually what happens to me. So they got a nice bird's eye view of everything from up here. So we'll get a picture of us at the uh, front of the VAB, assuming it fits. Uh, the width of this thing is a bit of concern, but if you don't make it wide, then it, the CG will want to topple the thing because it will be very unstable. So you need to have a nice wide footprint, and this might not even be wide enough. We'll see in a minute. And we're going to find out one of two things. One, I can't get to the launch pad at all. Or two, I can get to the launch pad, but I can't get up the ramp to the launch pad. Which I think is usually what ends up happening with these things. So here it is. This is roughly... Now if I actually had measured some stuff out, I could actually like make this thing exactly as wide as the tracks, but I don't want it as wide as, wide as the tracks, so... Hey, picture time. Alright. I think what we're going to do is we're going to cheat, and we're not going to... Oh yeah, I can clear that. We're going to straddle the this launch ramp way thing here. So at least we can get closer to the launch pad like we're doing this for real. I kind of wish I had the mod that could move this out of the way because it's right where I need to be. But, uh, yeah. If these tires had more traction and better grip, they'd make for excellent off-road uh, shenanigans, but they don't. They're not very good for that kind of thing. Alright, so we clear this, and now comes the really stupid fun part. 
Can we clear the ramp? I don't think we can. I think I'm going to run into horrible issues with traction. I'll just kind of bump into the ramp and not even be able to get up the thing. The answer to that is more boosters, but I don't have boosters on this thing. Or jet engines facing backwards, you can just... Well, that solves your electricity problem, too. So let's see what happens if I just nudge up against it. Okay, now let's go forward. Forward. Yeah, I'm already losing speed. Wobble, 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 wobble. Oh my gosh, I'm actually doing it. It's actually working. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Shimmy trick. Shimmy, shimmy. All right, and now we're going to lose traction because we're going to lose our stuff. And then we hit the brakes so we don't want to over go off the edge. Oh my gosh, it actually stinking worked. I'm so surprised. Burp. Set the brakes. Set brakes. All right, perfect. We are at the launch pad. Drove there manually. Why? Because reasons. All right, so now we want to control from here. If you don't do this, the rocket will just take off and leave you behind. So north, east is that way. Okay, let's do this. Let me see which tank am I gonna pull from first. These ones. Blow up all the things. Yes, glorious. Let's go to the moon, guys. No, I want to go this way. Darn it. I got confused. Usually it's, you, you get used to the same controller doing the same thing whenever you uh, launch. I probably need to slow down some. There we go. Perfect. Let's see if I can get us to moon orbit. I won't do the whole moon trip, but I'll do most of it. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do hold prograde. Now we got to switch to this view since this is what where the business is really going to happen. <laughs> I could launch it from Island Airfield too. Let's launch rockets from anywhere we want. Sweet. We're going to try to get to about 75,000 meters, and then we'll call it a wrap. How are we looking? Plenty. Set. That's uh, our apoapsis is set. Now we're we sitting here. We're we pulling a charge. Nope. We yeah we don't have any solar right now. But that's okay. We're coasting at this point. We're going to drop below a kilometer per second here. You see, when I get to 20 seconds, I'll hammer the throttle. That'll work. If I keep Apoapsis from running away or catching up to me, it should be smooth sailing. Where is the moon anyway? There? Okay, we'll have to circularize and then wait. Go ahead and get this set to circular. There we go, perfect. Alright, let's go ahead and do this mission here.
So Moonrise is going to be around here. So we'll kick ourselves out. Oh, he's under guess. There we go. How's that looking? I can make that better. Actually, that's pretty spot on. That'll work. We'll speed up that uh, process of getting her lined up for the mission. The node. And we'll fast forward a bunch. We'll swing back around. We'll see Moonrise lined up for our mission. Okay, now the issue we're going to run into here is you can see this blue line. That's when our main stage is going to run out. That's when the rest of this booster runs dry. So it's going to do quite a bit of it, but not all of it. So we have to basically... Uh, when I get to 32 seconds, I'm going to hit it. Because this engine here, the Poodle, is not going to have a whole bunch of oomph to it. It'll have to carry the rest of the way. Should be enough. And the reason I switched back to just stability assist is because if you get off your maneuver, you will have problems. That's actually not too bad. It's a little bit early, but that's fine. A matter of a couple seconds. Who knows, maybe they fix it so it can use that. It'd be really nice if they did. I'll go ahead and ease into that now manually. Moon periopsis is shrinking away. I want to get it as low as I can get. That's pretty low. 12,000? Sure. We can go better. We can go like this. There we go, 8,000 meters. It's called killing yourself. You smash into the moon. You get really low, it's, you're playing with fire. Alright, so this is actually kind of a two-part mission. A two-part video. Kind of smacking together a crawler to get something to the launch pad, and then doing Kerbal X stock to the moon. Because I didn't fiddle with this rocket at all. Usually I kind of adjust it, clean it up a little bit, stuff like that. But in this case, what you see is what you get. Oh, it's not speed past the moon too much there. Alright, so... I keep getting really hesitant with the time acceleration bit here. Let's go retrograde, Jeb. Yeah, nice and close. I can wait a little bit, actually. I see it pulling away. Let's do 20 seconds. Perfect. I can actually go right for a landing right in the crater if I wanted. But first, let's circularize. Um, I'm like I'm gonna go for a landing now, actually. Uh, let's see, yeah, that's gonna be a nighttime landing. Do not want. Let's do a wasteful maneuver because we can. There, perfect. That'll work. That means I can get to Parapsis and then I can do a landing over here somewhere. Alright, let's take stock of what we got. Whoa, frame rate. There's Kerbin. Let's make the nav ball look kind of how we want it to. 
Can't work faster than 10 times below. Yeah, we're really low to the ground. I got some other stuff here. I didn't even bother titling this guy. I just said, hey, let's do a moon mission. Blam. I think I made an Apollo kind of uh, thing using the stock parts, and then I fling it, flung it at the moon, and it worked. Didn't have much RCS left over for that one, but it did work. Well, there's some flat spots down here in this crater. So what do you say we do that? I should have enough daylight. Let me see, I can wait to do it. I don't need to do it right away. Uh, let me see, we'll clear the lip and then we'll do it. I want to be able to see my shadow. Actually, we'll go a little bit past the crater. Well, there's that canyon. People do the X-Wing, X you know, Death Star trench runs through this thing. It's pretty cool. Can't really see it from up here. But that is a giant canyon. Which we can see from... There it is. You line up your orbit, then you just kind of pass through it, and that's basically all there is to it. It's, it's really kind of cool, actually. That's the Death Star trench. It's a lot more impressive when you're... Yeah, if that orbit was just a little bit off, I could have totally zipped past that. I'm close enough to see the terrain scatters, though. So that's pretty cool. Alright, so now we are ascending. I think I like this patch right here. I think that's a nice patch of dirt. Now this thing has mod propellant, but no RCS thrusters at all. And that ground does not look nearly as level as I thought it was. Actually, it's not too bad. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Do it now! Let's go to 150. Time accelerate, because I don't have all day. Now we're out of time acceleration, we don't even have it anymore to do. I'm just guessing when to do the suicide burn. Let's do it now. Ah, I was way too early. Fiddlesticks, I'm always early for these things. But... We're not that far off the ground at this point. And we got plenty of fuel to get back. There's our shadow. Perfect. Do a quick blips of the throttle to bleed off some speed. Let's wait a little bit further. We'll just drop it right on there. No, 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 no! <laughs> oh, thank goodness it didn't want to flip all the way over. That's usually what happens to these things. Perfect! Alright, so I gotta get proof that we did it. Well, that's all sorts of shady. Can I like, make this a little bit better? Nope. Hey, let's see. Let's get a scientist. Yeah, you can go down there and take a picture. We don't have all day. Turn it. What's wrong with you? Oh, well, fine. We'll just do this. <laughs> Shadow! This isn't looking good. The fact that your lander is all wibbly-wobbly here is just not cool. Oh, I didn't change the flag. All right, let's do this. Yeah, I'll put the ladder out, but who needs it? Oh, that's right, I forgot. You have to manually face your kerbals now. I don't like that bit.
You have to go like this. You have to hit the Q and Q and E keys to to do what you want them to do. You can't just face them. They don't want to do that. So it's a little counterintuitive how it used to be, but I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm old school. Uh, such a thing as old school KSP players. Grab. Get on there. All right. We gotta get home, so we're gonna turn to 90 immediately after taking off. Let's go ahead and dial that all the way up. Let's go for about 450 and then we'll take stock of the situation. How's that look? We can go further than that. Alright, so where's Kerbin? Alright, so we don't need to fully circularize, we just need to get a little bit past AP, right around. Oh, well, that's gonna put us right smack dab into the ground, so. Alright, so now we can time accelerate a little bit more. I try to do a Kerbal X to the moon and back flight once a year just to keep proficiency up while doing all the other stuff that I do. This one might be okay. Prograde, please. Uh, it's closed orbit, so if I strand them here, at least they're not totally screwed. Alright, so how much fuel do I got? 91 units of oxidizer and 74, 54. All right, so let's plan a maneuver. Well, that's not going to work. All right, it actually tells you your delta V budget. All right, so it tells me I have enough. Perfect! Because I saw that was red. That tells me I don't have the Delta V to do it, which is awesome that the game does that for you now. So they don't they don't give you Delta V calculator, but they kind of give you an eyeball. You know, you don't have enough push lane to get where you need to go. So I have enough to do it. 10 second burn. Oh yeah, I got this in the bag. Speed up just a little bit more so I can get to the 5 second mark. Oh, get us home. At this point, I could just run the thing completely dry and get home. Alright, so how's that do? 30,000 meters? There we go, 24,000. Perfect. That's enough. I have got us on the way home. So it's nice that they added how much push do I have left. Nothing. <laughs> the so fumes. I've, I've. I, this is about as close as I got. I mean, I had a little bit more to do it, so I had a little bit of a leeway, but really not much. And you'd have to take a look at the Kerbal X stock specs to see if this thing has enough oomph to do the mission or not. On paper, it rarely does. Now, once again, I'm gonna land somewhere I don't want to land, but that's okay. All right, so let's retrograde this mess. I gotta try and retrograde like right this minute. And we can actually help bleed off some speed, which we're gonna lose here very quickly. Now, I don't think this engine's rated for these kind of temps. Let's see. Our apoapsis is killing itself rather impressively. Get rid of that guy. I don't need stability control for that. And now we find out if this stinking heat shield is going to do its job. Because we kind of went in a little bit thick, and now we're losing... Oh yeah, we're, we're losing enough speed. You look at here at the later rate of usage, it's 2.1, 2.09. Yeah, that was stuff blowing up. There, that is still. Bye, service module. 
nice knowing you. Thanks for doing your job, man. Appreciate it. So now our rate of ablator usage is dropping, which means the worst of the heating is over. Which is good. We'll just stop accelerate through a lot of this here. Eventually the blader won't even be used. Yep, there it is. I don't like night landings, but I guess that couldn't be helped. And there's a service module just going away. Let's open the chute at four times his work. <laughs> oh boy, this sucks to be me. All right, so that would have worked except for that little bit there. So I'll call that a win. I guess uh, having fizz warp turned on doesn't work so well. Let's see if anything from this bit here survives. Nothing? It just disintegrated. Well, anyway, that was a wrap. Fortunately, I can hit revert flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll show you how it looks like in the, v in the space plane hangar. Now you can see it kind of like up close and personal. So what I did here is I did what's control a control cabin. This is what controls the part, so I get proper orientation. The fuel cells, which are ducted to these little Oscar B tanks. Otherwise, they'll try to pull from everything else. And then I have these vertical strut works here, which are tied off to the horizontal bars, which are then tied off to everything else. So, well, that part's not supposed to be there. I guess it was when I cloned this part, this ended up connecting off somewhere else. So what would I change if I had to do this again? Well, I wouldn't pop my parachute too stinking fast. Maybe I'd put a drill in there or something. But that's extra dead weight. I don't know, it actually worked. It just had, you know, user error at the very end there. Oh well, it worked. It did what I wanted it to do and it illustrated the concept really well, so I'm happy with it. So I hope you all had fun, and I'll catch you all later. You all have a good day.